Okay, welcome back to Econ 104, Introduction to Macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to quickly go over access to an external resource, and that external resource is gapminder.org. Uh, this is a great tool. It gives us a lot of easy access to a lot of data collected by the UN, many other organizations out there as well, the UN being one of the big ones that they pull their data from. And the nice thing with this data is they don't just display it in a table. They have a nice graphic user interface, making it nice and easy to visualize what's happening and look for relationships between. So in this week's discussion, this is where we're going through this, is I want you to utilize gapminder.org. I want you to take a look at growth rates, and I want you to compare these growth rates, that is the growth of real GDP per capita for few different countries and kind of see, okay, what's happening as our economy grows with relation to other variables, other metrics. So let's jump over and let's take a look at how we access Gapminder. Okay, so if you navigate to gapminder.org, just either do a Google search for that or put it right into your URL bar and uh, put that in to navigate directly to the website, you'll get to their main splash page. It updates from time to time, but currently it looks something like this. So right here, interesting little thing, giving, hey, some data-driven information about stuff going on in the world. If you're interested, you can go and you can scroll through, and there's little tests like, hey, what's going on with this? And then you can say, how good is your understanding of what's actually happening? As they suggest here, well, many are wrong about what they think is happening in the world versus what the data is actually saying. So interesting thing for you to take a look at on your own time if you are interested in that what we are going to do is we're going to go over to resources here and once we're in resources we're going to go to this middle part here understand a changing world this takes a second to load once we have it up what it's displaying it defaults to showing us income versus life expectancy and it shows us for every country in the world as we hit play, it navigates us through time. So depending on how far back they have decent data for, and we move through time, you see the numbers ticking along there. We can, uh, we can speed this up. There we go, fastest speed there. We see that, hey, one of the things is income is increasing, right? Countries with higher income, they tend to also have higher life expectancies. And we see this kind of move all the way along. Although keep in mind what we just witnessed there come the 1990s, 2000s, even these low income countries, they started just rising straight up as well. That is, we saw a rise in life expectancy without a rise in income. If you want to know well, what exactly do they mean by income, you can always hover over it, click on it, and it will show for us right there, hey, that's income per person, that's GDP per capita. That's in PPP, purchasing power parity, dollars, inflation adjusted. So, okay, what exactly does that mean? Into that little side bit there, uh, GDP per person adjusted for differences in purchasing power. So adjusting for changes in the exchange rate and what things cost in each country. And an international price is fixed in 2011. So don't worry too much about that international price bit. It's just one way to make it constant across all the countries for comparison. The size of these little bubbles, if you look at them, is population. So the bigger the bubble, the bigger the population. And if you click on it, you'll notice down here where it says, hey, size, population, it changes to the actual number of how many people are there. So the U.S. about 331 million as of 2020. What we can do is we can go through and we can select countries we want. We can either search for them or we can just scroll down. It's alphabetical and we can identify them. So let's take a look at Canada and let's go all the way down. Let's take a look at Canada and the United States. So if we select them initially, they just kind of become a little bit brighter color while everything else fades. If we don't want to view the other stuff at all, we can take this deselect and drag it all the way to the left to make everything else disappear. We can now take a look at just Canada and the US as we move through time. If we hit play, it goes through. You see relatively constant life expectancy for an increasing income initially. And then we start to spike as we move through time. The bigger one there, that's the United States, more population. The smaller one there, that guy there being Canada, the smaller population. 
we see typically speaking, right, general kind of relationship as income increases, so does life expectancy. That is, we could imagine a positive relationship, a positive correlation between these two. Other possible scenarios is we could have a negative correlation. That is, we would have a downward sloping line, not necessarily for these variables, but with life expectancy and income, we'd expect positive. Other variables, we might witness a negative correlation. That is, as life expectancy increases, something else maybe decreases. So, for example, let's take a look at something that might be that. Let's take a look at child mortality versus income. <clears throat> there we go. It populates us over the time period we're looking at. And we witness that, hey, that is typically a negative relationship. The higher the income per person, that's the higher the per person, the uh, GDP per capita, the lower the rates of child mortality. So again, just emphasizing, although GDP per capita is not a perfect measure of development of standard of living or quality of life, we see that it is strongly correlated with things that we would be interested in. That is, as GDP per capita increases, well, things like child mortality drop. So one of the things we can look at. We can play around with these. There's lots of different things we can take a look at. Uh, big ones, of course, we can go into economy. We can go into economic situation. Let's go incomes and growth. You'll see that there's lots of different ways that we can measure GDP. They're also looking at gross national income, GNI. Don't worry about that. We're not getting into GNI, gross national income, for this course. Big ones you want to take a look at are either GDP per capita, this would be in fixed US dollars, while income is in these international dollars. We could also be taking a look at the Gini coefficient, that is our uh, kind of our measure of inequality. If you go into poverty and inequality, you can take a look at, hey, how many billionaires do we have? How many people in extreme poverty, et cetera, et cetera, as we move through. Take a look at environmental situations, take a look at energy, take a look at health. Uh, population. There's lots of data that's of interest to take a look at here. So you can change that up. Like, for example, let's take a look at environment. Let's take a look at our CO2 emissions versus income per person. And what we've witnessed is that since 1990, the CO2 intensity of our economic output has dropped. Right? We see this negative, this downward relationship. That is, hey, income per person is increasing. Well, it's more stuff per person, more expenditure per person. But at the same time, what do we witness? We witness that the CO2 intensity of that output, right? how much CO2 we've emitted per dollar expended, how much CO2 we've emitted per thing we've bought, is actually shrinking. So, hey, that's a good sign, right? From an environmental standpoint, that's a good sign. And really, we can explain this too by being, hey, if we have higher levels of income, higher levels of GDP per capita, well, our basic needs are met. We are now willing to kind of put some of that income towards helping the environment, making sure that there's an environment and a future for our children and grandchildren as we move forward, right? As we looked at different levels of income, if you're at a low level of income, a substance level of survival, you don't care about the future. You're interested in today's food, today's water, today's shelter, today's security. Who cares about tomorrow if you're not sure if you have food for today? So we see that as this average income increases, so does our ability to combat things like climate change. Of course, it's a bit of a catch-22, right? Climate change, environmental impacts, all that environmental degradation is also a direct result of our economic activity. So, hey, more economic activity is also more environmental degradation. So, ah, bit of a devil's bargain there. It goes both ways. So, quick overview as to how to use Gapminder. Quick overview as to how to change these to take a look at the comparison between the two. You can always hit play to see how they move through time. Really, that just kind of gives you an insight as, okay, as we move through time, were these positively or negatively correlated? If you ever get two variables that just essentially form a straight line, either straight horizontal or straight vertical, that's really just telling you that there's no real relationship between the two. Nothing really, right? So you can play around this a bit. You can change the sizes there. You can change the size based off of anything. You can change it based off of life expectancy, child mortality, 
uh, population, that's just the default and often a good one to stick with. Okay, so that does us for Gapminder. If you have any questions about utilizing this, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, this is a tool that I will have you use for this week's discussion. So play around with it a bit. I'll direct you in the discussion itself as to what, uh, what variables I want you to compare. Again, any questions, post in the comments below, post on D2L, or feel free to send me an email. Thanks, and until next time.